we're about to begin our interior uh, section of our pre-trip and we're going to be checking our gauges and our uh, various switches in the bus and it's very important during this pre-trip that or this part of the pre-trip that you follow a pattern and the pattern will become apparent you follow your hand around and try to repeat that same pattern every time you do your interior check and that way you don't have to memorize anything you'll become accustomed to the pattern and you won't have to memorize and therefore possibly miss some part of it so to begin our the first part of our brake test or our first part of our uh, interior check is we make sure that our seat is adjusted for us as a result our, when our seats are set our head is set and our mirrors are therefore in the right position and they're adjusted for us and the windshield is free and clear of damage and I can see clearly so to begin now we begin the test of the air brake system and we do that with three brake tests air brake tests the first is the static brake test the second is the applied brake test and the final is the spring brake test the static brake test the first one is we apply we set steady turn on the ignition because the wheel is chalked on the bus we release the parking brake and make check that our air gauges are at 120 pounds so we sit for one minute with our foot on the floor not on the pedal and after one minute we should not lose more than two pounds per square inch in the tank so tick tock tick tock tick tock one minute's up we did not lose more than one pound or two pounds in one minute the second is the applied brake test for the applied brake test it says as it says we apply our foot to the service brake and <clears throat> There'll be a small initial loss of pressure, and then after that, we should not lose more than three pounds in, in one minute. So, apply my foot to the brake, service brake. There was no more, there was a very small initial loss in pressure. Wait for one minute with our foot remaining on the brake. After one minute, and after the initial loss in pressure, we did not lose more than three pounds per square inch in the tank. The final brake test is the spring brake test. What we'll do is apply or pump the brake, the service brake, multiple times to test our various uh, warning devices. The first being the wigwag, which will drop at 90 pounds as we start losing air. The second will be uh, the warning lights and warning alarms will go off at 60 pounds. And at 30 pounds, the spring brake or the parking brake will engage. So let's go ahead. At 90 pounds, the leg line went down. My alarms went off at 60. At 30 pounds, my spring brake engaged. So my tanks are virtually empty and all of my warning devices worked. So to begin refilling the tanks, we'll start the engine. When I started the engine, my ABS light came on and went off and my oil pressure is beginning to return to normal. So if we bring our attention over here, in spite of the noise, while we're waiting for the air tanks to refill, We'll check our switches. We're going to check each of our heater switches in turn, one at a time. All of them worked. Keeping your hand here, move straight down. We'll move the to the defrost switch. We'll turn it to the right and confirm whether it's working. It is working. Move our hand back here to this part of the panel. We have our Front fans on, this fan on the right side, 
on. We'll leave it on for a second. And while that's on, I'll press the noise suppressor button, which turns off various devices. But when we approach a railroad crossing, we have to have silence. So that works also. So we'll turn that fan off. We have our mirror defroster, which doesn't do anything. We'll just turn it on and off to show that it's there. I'm going to pre-arm the master. The master switch will pre-arm all of our student loading and unloading lights. And we'll come back to that in a couple of moments. Move up to the top row. Those are our interior cabin lights for the passenger compartment. We checked, they're all working. The other is the cabin light for the driver. That's working. We were hand up, the destination sign, start looking outside in our crossover mirrors. The destination sign is now illuminated. I'm going to arm our crossing arm by pulling out this switch. So, like the master, when we open the door, the crossing arm will deploy. Move my hand up here, and we'd be in what I like to call the four H's. First, we start with our headlights. And in my crossover mirrors, I can see my headlights are on and my clearance lights are on on the top of the bus. Move down, turn on the high idle, which will speed up the uh, filling of the air tanks. It's working. I'm going to turn it off for now because of noise. Move my hand over here to the stem and try my high beams, another H. Flip my high beams, I can see my lights, headlights, cycling between high and low beams and my indicator light on the dash panel, the blue one, comes on. And the other H is my horn. My horn works. So while your hand's positioned here, move it up to the dashboard, the instrument panel. You see our tanks are now back up to 120 pounds. Our temperature gauge for the engine is at normal. My voltage is at 14.1 volts, which is normal. My oil pressure is normal. My DEF, or my diesel exhaust fluid, is full. And I have adequate fuel in my fuel tanks. I move up. Because my tanks are full, air tanks are full, I can reset my wigwag. On my hands up here, I can see that my windshield is free and clear of damage, and the rubber around the windshield is not damaged or cracked. My windshield wipers from this vantage point are not cracked or damaged and don't seem to be secure. I'll now move over to the stem and test them. Both the washers and the wipers are working properly. While my hands on the stem, I'll do my signal lights. My left signal light is working up here on the headlight and on the up on the hood and on the side of the bus. The indicator light is working on the left side. Look over to the right side, the same thing. My right on the hood and on the headlight is working and on the side of the bus. And both of the cables are working on my dashboard. While my hand is still on the stem, there's one other function here, and that's our hazard lights. I'm pulling the silver thing, I'm turning on the hazard lights. They're working here on the hood, they're working on the side of, of the bus on the, those indicator lights. The last blinky thing we want to do is my yellow state lights. So because my master's on, I can now press the yellow, the orange switch on the dash to make my state yellows begin flashing. I see them in my crossover mirrors, and the indicator light on the dash right here is blinking, so it's working. So now we'll move on to the second part of the interior check by going back to the back, opening up the door, and checking to see if my hazard lights 
and my state yellows are working. So I can stop.